Believe it or not, there was once a time before the internet when ignorance was bliss. Hearing the words, I don't know, was often the end of an inquiry. But now, with an endless void of information available at our fingertips, a new phrase has taken over. Google it. Want to know what time it is on the other side of the world? Google it. Want to know how to change a tire on your car? Google it. You can even watch a video tutorial on how to do it through a site called YouTube, which is now owned by, you guessed it, Google. So technically, that still counts as Googling it. The fact that we commonly use Google as a catch-all verb to mean an internet search, as opposed to saying Bing it or Yahoo it, is a sign of just how integral Google and its parent company Alphabet have become in the lives of people everywhere. It's similar to how playing video games, no matter which console you were using, was often referred to as playing Nintendo in the 80s and 90s because Nintendo was the dominant games company. Now, of course, Nintendo has been pegged back by the likes of Xbox and PlayStation. Yet Google has not only managed to stay above the competition, but it has become one of the most successful companies in the world. It also continues to expand its reach by releasing its own products, such as phones and tablets, while still being the go-to search engine for literally billions of people. But why Google? How did this once-fledgling startup ascend to such staggering heights, becoming the internet giant that shapes how we navigate, communicate, and consume information in the digital age? Join us as we delve into the compelling narrative of Google's rise, unraveling the key milestones, groundbreaking innovations, and strategic maneuvers that transformed a humble search engine into an unrivaled internet powerhouse. Anyone for a back row? The birth of Google. Google's inception can be traced back to 1996, when Larry Page and Sergey Brin, two PhD students at Stanford University, began working on a research project called Backrub. Their goal was to create a more efficient way to navigate and index the rapidly expanding internet. The duo had already met when working on the Stanford Digital Library project, with the aim to develop the enabling technologies for a single, integrated, and universal digital library. In need of a dissertation idea, Page began focusing on the mathematical properties of the World Wide Web, as well as how pages link together online. Soon he contacted Scott Hassan, a research assistant at Stanford who was instrumental in writing code for an early search engine. As such, Hassan is often considered an unofficial third founder of Google though he left the Backrub project before it was renamed and turned into a company. Speaking of which, the major breakthrough came in 1998, when Page and Brin officially launched Google. Prior to this, a primitive version of the search engine had been released on the Stanford website, though it used almost half of the university's network bandwidth. The domain google.com was registered on September 15, 1997. And a year later, the Google company was formally incorporated in the garage of Susan Wojcicki, no less. If that name sounds familiar, she eventually became an executive at Google and the CEO of YouTube. As for the company name, Google was derived from the mathematical term Google, representing the number 100 followed by 100 zeros. This reflected the founder's mission to organize an immense amount of information on the web. And boy, did they succeed. Google's approach revolutionized search engines by introducing a unique algorithm called PageRank. The algorithm analyzed the quality and relevance of web pages by examining the number and importance of links pointing to them. It aimed to deliver more accurate and useful search results than other search engines of the time, such as Webcrawler, Yahoo, or Excite, which essentially just ranked results according to how many times a certain term appeared on a web page. The Rise of Google The simplicity and effectiveness of Google's search engine quickly gained popularity, attracting users with its clean interface and efficient search capabilities. By September 2001, just three years after it had officially launched, Google was already the fourth most popular site on the Internet, behind Yahoo, AOL, and MSN. 
Despite this, it wasn't generating a whole lot of revenue. So, Google took the first step towards capitalizing on its popularity by introducing Google AdWords. Under this model, advertisers initially paid for impressions to appear on search result lists, but this tactic proved to be underwhelming. In response, Google set about refining and enhancing the AdWords platform, similar to how it continuously evolved its search engine algorithms. Three years later, AdWords evolved into an automated pay-per-click ad auction system that revolutionized digital advertising. Google wasn't just selling ads based on keywords anymore. It was instead offering the most relevant ads, leading to increased clicks and more revenue for both advertisers and Google. Even now, AdWords remains a constant revenue source that fuels Google's operations. It was followed by AdSense, which allows any website owner to access Google's advertising inventory. This two-pronged strategy of combining the world's most popular search engine with an efficient, easy-to-use advertising platform is what makes Google the fourth most valuable company today, with a market cap of over $1.7 trillion as of December 2023. Branching out As the internet continued to grow, Google expanded its services too, introducing innovative products such as Gmail, Google Maps, Google Docs, and many others. Through strategic acquisitions such as YouTube in 2006 and Android in 2005, Google expanded its influence across various digital domains, solidifying its position as one of the world's leading technology companies. To date, Google has spent over $40 billion acquiring other companies, making over 250 acquisitions, including a thermostat company, Nest Labs, which it acquired for $3.2 billion, and Motorola, which it acquired for $12.5 billion but later sold to Lenovo. Google's success has also stemmed from its commitment to technological innovation. The company invested heavily in research and development, exploring new ventures like self-driving cars, artificial intelligence, and futuristic projects through its Google X division, now known as X, a subsidiary of Alphabet Inc. Mind you, not all of Google's exploits have been successful. Most notably, Google Video became obsolete after the acquisition of YouTube. Google Glass failed to capture any kind of market, and Google Plus, the company's attempt at breaking into the social media sphere was gradually discontinued due to a poor user experience. Still, the company continues to update its offerings and provide new ones in order to stay ahead of its rivals. Don't be evil The fact that Google has its fingers in so many pies, so to speak, has caused some concerns, though. In 2016, politicians throughout Europe feared that the company was growing too powerful and was being given an easier ride on tax by lobbying governments. As a large company, Google isn't required to disclose how much tax it pays in each country that it operates in. However, politicians in some nations, like the UK, are adamant that Google isn't paying enough, nor is the company behaving in a way that earns public trust. The US Department of Justice has also been assessing Google's dominance in recent years, especially when it comes to how much personal data the company holds about each and every one of us. Google laid off more than 12,000 employees in 2023, some of whom had worked there for decades. Would you trust a disgruntled ex-Google employee with your personal information? Funnily enough, Google once adopted the phrase, don't be evil as its slogan, as if it needed to remind itself not to abuse its power. But while the jury's still out as to whether Google is good or bad, some experts believe that it may not be the top dog forever. Can anyone compete with Google? In the words of Brian Weiser, an analyst at Pivotal Research Group, it's not that hard to build a search engine, and there are plenty of them out there. I mean, he's not wrong. But given the fact that Google still has over 90% of the market share, it's going to take some doing. If a company can come up with a better search engine and make it profitable, it wouldn't take much for users and advertisers to switch. That said, Google is very good at what it does for several reasons. It's simple. Google keeps its site clear, concise, and convenient, 
leading to a positive user experience. It's speedy. Google can process over 100,000 search queries per second, and according to tests from 2022, Google Chrome is the fastest search browser in the world when returning results. It's significant. Google's search index is over 100 million gigabytes in size and contains hundreds of billions of web pages, more than any other competitor. Plus, Google has diversified. It's no longer just a search engine. They have so many irons in the fire, at least one of them will pay off. So it's unlikely we'll be seeing the back of Google anytime soon. Final Thoughts Google's journey from a Stanford research project to a multinational conglomerate has been marked by continuous innovation, a commitment to organizing information, and a focus on enhancing user experience across the internet landscape. While the company's growth has brought immense benefits and convenience in terms of information access and technological advancements, concerns remain when it comes to things like market dominance, data privacy, ethical concerns, and global influence. After all, the decisions made by Google can have far-reaching societal impacts, both now and in the future. So, has Google grown too big for its boots? Let us know your thoughts down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and make sure you subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.